So in this video, I'm going to talk about how carrier drift arises or causes a, a current, a current I, uh, and how this leads to Ohm's law. But first, uh, just some cleanup from the last video. Um, we derived the expression for velocity of a hole. Uh, it's just mu p times the electric field. Uh, so the velocity of an electron, similarly, you can write just as mu n times the electric field, but you do have to put this minus sign out front. So that's that just has to do with the fact that when you apply an electric field uh, E, the electron, since it has a negative charge, moves in the opposite direction, V. So these, these two equations, uh, let's call this VP and VN for hole and electron, uh, these two com equations comprise everything we'll need to know uh, in order to calculate the drift current. So if we want to actually calculate the current that's arising from uh, holes and electrons, let's, let's analyze them separately, once at a time, and then just add them together at the very end if, if we really want to. So we see, let's, let's say we've got a certain wire, and it's a, a silicon wire. And why, why a wire and not a block of silicon? Well, I just find it much easier to visualize flow through a wire, which is something that I'm very familiar with. So we've got a bunch of holes, uh, H plus, they've got a positive charge. And let's say we've got a certain, a certain volume of them that we're interested in. So we, if we want to calculate the current, uh, we want to calculate the change of charge per unit time, or the number of charges multiplied by the, the charge per charge carrier, um, divided by the time that it takes them all to cross. So we want to calculate how long all of these holes uh, take to cross this, uh, this interface, this little area, a slice of the wire here. And that will give us the total current if we can just, uh, if we can just do that relatively simple calculation. Well, we know that uh, we've got a certain distance here, D. Uh, we've got a certain area, a cross-sectional area of the wire, A. And we know the total number of holes within this area uh, the total number of holes is just the hole density, P, which is what we've spent so much effort trying to calculate the last several videos, uh, multiplied by the volume. And I'm going to write the volume as A times D, uh, just because I also want to use velocity here, and that'll make, uh, that'll make it much, much more convenient. So the total number of charge carriers is just the charge density times the area times the distance. Uh, and so if, if you, uh, we're, we're trying to plug things into this formula, and the time that it takes this whole volume to cross this interface is just the distance divided by the velocity, because it's the, this is just basic, uh, you can use just units to argue this, it's just meters divided by meters per second, which is seconds, uh, or the, the time that it takes to go a certain distance is just that distance divided by the velocity. Uh, seconds. I, I like to argue in terms of units because everything, almost everything in engineering can be done, done in terms of units. Uh, so if we just plug these two things in to this equation, uh, we'll get that the current is just equal to Q times N, which is P times the volume, or A times D, divided by delta T, which is D over V, or we can now put V, the velocity, up top. And so these Ds cancel out, the distances cancel, because it was a somewhat contrived quantity to begin with, so we'd expect it to cancel. Uh, so the total current we get as being Q times the charge density times A times the velocity V. And this is the velocity of a hole. But we know we can write the velocity of a hole uh, as just mu P times the electric field. So we get that I is just equal to Q P A mu p uh, times e. And uh, now typically we're not interested in the total current uh, in semiconductors. We, we are when we get to devices, but in terms of analyzing um, the volume properties of devices, if we don't know the actual area or the actual distances involved, we're more interested in the current per unit area or I per A, and that's called the current density J. And so J is just equal to I per A, or we just divide this expression by A, which is just QP, 
times mu p times e. And this makes sense, right? Because the total current should be, the current density should be proportional to the charge. The more charge you have per charge carrier, the higher the current. Uh, the more total charge carriers you have, the higher the current. And the faster they move, uh, the higher the current. And the larger electric field you apply, the larger the current. So this, this equation makes sense. And so this was the equation for calculating the whole current. So uh, JP uh, is just equal to Q times P times mu P times E. And we, we don't like to deal with uh, more than one constant at a time in electrical <laughs> engineering because we're kind of lazy. Um, and so we call this quantity the conductivity, uh, or specifically, this is the conductivity due to holes, so sigma P. So we say that JP is equal to sigma P times E. And this is actually uh, a variant of Ohm's law. This is the microscopic Ohm's law. And in reality, this J is a vector quantity, and this E is also a vector quantity. And sigma is just a, a constant of proportionality called the conductivity. You might have met the conductivity before in calculating things like resistances. And indeed, uh, we'll be able to use this equation directly to derive Ohm's law in just a second. Um, before, before we do that, we're, we need to calculate the electron current. And I have to warn you, um, this involves uh, a bit of a subtlety that has tripped both me up on exams and many, many other undergraduates. So it's important to really understand it. Um, so if we do the same argument as before, we've got an, a bunch of electrons flowing through the wire. Um, remember that I said that the velocity of the electrons is minus uh, the electron mobility times the electric field. Uh, and so we would, if we want to use the expression that we derived above, uh, you'd just expect, well, we just replace the velocity with minus n, and then that's, that's all we need to do. But um, we also need to be careful because this, uh, this total volume of electrons, so we've got a distance d, uh, we've got an area a, this total volume of electrons contains negative charge, so it leads to a negative current uh, for a velocity. So we write, we'll write that Jn, uh, if we, I, I don't want to redo the whole, the whole derivation above, it's just equal to the negative, um, so because it's negative current that's flowing, uh, minus Qn mu n e. So the velocity itself is negative, which is where we get this minus sign from. But the current, because these charge carriers carry a negative charge, is also negative. So we get something kind of interesting and somewhat counterintuitive, that the current density Jn is just equal to Qn mu n times E. And so if we apply an electric field to a piece of silicon, I'm going to switch to using a piece of silicon instead of a wire. If we apply an electric field, um, the holes will move this way, and the electrons will move this way. And so the total current, J, is just equal to Jn plus Jp, or Qn mu n e plus Qp mu p e. So the total current is actually the sum of the electron current and the hole current, just because we've got two negative signs that happen to cancel each other out. So this is the total, um, the total current density flowing in a semiconductor. And we're going to use current density from now on. Uh, so uh, just get, get kind of comfortable with it. It's just the current flowing per unit area. So it's, this is why it's called current density. Or we can write this as the total current density is just Q times N times mu N plus q times p times mu p, all multiplied by e. And so this constant is sigma. So this is the total conductivity of the solid. So we can write that j total is just equal to sigma e. And these are, again, vectors, but we, we're not worrying about that right now. So the current density 
is equal to the conductivity times the electric field. And the conductivity depends on both electrons and holes. But if we've got an n-type semiconductor, so if we've got uh, something doped with group five elements or doped with electrons, then sigma is just approximately sigma n because n is so much greater than p. Similarly, if we've got a p-type semiconductor doped with holes or boron or acceptors, whichever one you prefer, uh, then we get sigma is approximately equal to sigma p because p is much, much larger than n. So the conductivity and the current can be dealt with uh, sort of in one lumped quantity or in two different quantities. And depending on what kind of semiconductor you'll, you're dealing with, you'll want to do one or the other. And so I've been promising you up to this point that we're going to see how this equation is nothing but Ohm's law. And so here I'm going to, I'm going to finally, finally fulfill that promise. So let's say we've got a block of silicon and we attach a battery to it. And that battery has a certain voltage V. Well, we know that the electric field inside the silicon is just going to be V uh, divided by the length of the semiconductor, just because the electric field is evenly distributed throughout the semiconductor, if it's uniformly doped. Uh, but from our equation, we know that J is just equal to sigma E, or sigma now V divided by L. And J, we said, we defined as the current uh, per unit area, which is just sigma V divided by L. Or if we rearrange, if we divide each side by sigma and multiply by L, we get that V is equal to I times L over sigma A. And this quantity is the resistance R. So if you've ever seen the equation for resistance of a slab, uh, you just heard that it was R is equal to the length of the resistance. So resistance is proportional to length divided by the conductivity uh, times the cross-sectional area. So it's inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. And this is just Ohm's law, V equals IR. So fundamentally, Ohm's law is coming from the process of accelerating electrons and then scattering them, accelerating holes and then scattering them. Uh, it's, it's nothing mysterious. It just comes straight out of Newton's law and straight out of classical semiconductor physics. So that is... Uh, that is where Ohm's law actually comes from.